Penguin Readers Level 1 The Gift of the Magi and Other Stories Written by O. Henry Introducing How can I buy a special Christmas gift for Jim with $1.87? What am I going to do? She thinks. O. Henry's short, short stories are often about the difficult times of people in America from 19 and 2 to 1910. In a lot of these stories, we visit New York. Other stories take us to Texas and Oklahoma away from the towns. Money is a big problem for many people in the stories. They work long days and they live in a cold apartments with only a little food. The people in Texas and Oklahoma have problems with money too. But in those stories, we see people in the fields and on the ranches. In some stories, people have money. They don't usually have difficult problems, but they have interesting stories. O. Henry writes about love problems too. Is an old man going to find love? Can a young man tell a woman about he love for her? Is a woman going to find her right man? Many people remember O. Henry's stories because they think, how is this story going to finish? You never know. Then you finish the story and you smile. O. Henry was William Sidney Porter. He was born in 1862 to 1910. A famous short story writer from the United States. His family lived in North California, in North Carolina, and they had very little money. In 1882, William went to Texas and started to write for a newspaper. He had uh, problems with money at work and the police put him in jail for three years at that time he started to write short stories in 19 and 2 he moved to New York there he finished Ten books of short stories. One famous is a famous book is a Cabbages and Kings. There are movies of three of his stories. Okay, now we come back to the gift of the Magi. The, the year is uh, 1905. 
We'll go. We are on the streets of New York, with its tall buildings, expensive stores, and important people. But what do we know about the little people who lives behind the door, who works in that small, dark office? Let's open a door and watch two young people on a cold day in December. The apartment is a small. It has only two rooms. There are no pictures or photos. We can't see any special things on the table. But. It is a happy home. Mister and Miss James, James, Dillingham, Young, live here. It is their first home, at eight dollar a week. Jim works six days a week for twenty dollar every evening. He walks slowly home. His days are long, and his feet are heavy. But then he opens the door of the apartment. There is Miss Zhang. He is Della. She is the light in his dark days. She has food on the table for him, and she looks at him with her beautiful brown eyes. Jim always smiles. He is happy man in his apartment with Della, and she is happy too. This afternoon we can see. Della in the apartment. Jim is at work. Della puts her money on the table. She has one point. She has one point eighty-seven dollar, and tomorrow is a Christmas. How can I buy a special Christmas gift for Jim? With one point eighty-seven dollar, what I'm going to do? She thinks. Della walks across her kitchen. What can I buy for Jim? Della looks at the window. She can see her unhappy face in it. She looks at her long, beautiful hair. Jim always says, "I like to see your hair every morning in the sun at work. I think about your hair." Mister and Miss James Dijon have a two special things. Della's hair and Jim's gold watch. The watch was a, a gift from Jim's father, and Jim always has it with him. Sometimes Della says, "Excuse me, Mister Zhang, what time is it?" Where then Jim smiles, and he takes the gold watch. From his coat, he opens the watch and looks at the at it with love. Then he tells Della the time. But now Della is thinking about her beautiful hair. Quickly, she puts on her thin black coat and old hat. She goes into the street. 
She runs to Miss Sophonia. This is tall, on first street. The old woman buys hair. Can you buy my hair? Della asks. Miss Sophonic, Sophronic, smiles. I can give you twenty for it. Okay, but please take it quickly, Della says. Della sits down, and Mr. Sophronic starts to work. Della doesn't look at her hair on the floor. At three o'clock, she takes the twenty dollar from Miss Sophronia. And puts on her hat. She runs quickly to Fourth Street and looks in every store. She finds her gift from for Jim, a beautiful gold chain. For his watch, for twenty-one dollar. Della runs home and finishes. The Christmas food. She is happy because she has a the chain for Jim's watch. Then she sees her hair in the window. Is Jim going to love me with short hair? Della thinks. But I did it for him. I wanted a gift for him. At seven o'clock. Della hears Jim at the door. He is never late. Della has her gift for him in her hand. The door opens and Jim walks into the kitchen. He looks thin and he th- is cold in his old coat and shoes. Then he sees Della's hair. He isn't angry. But he is quiet. Jim, talk to me. I'm going to have a long hair again one day, but this evening I have a special gift for you. Let's be happy. It's Christmas tomorrow, Della says. Della's, but. Jim says, "Where is your beautiful hair?" At Miss Sophronia's door. She has my hair now, and I have a gift for you. And I loved you. I love you, Della says. Jim doesn't answer. He looks at Della. Then he says. Della, I loved you with long hair, and I love you with short hair, and I have a a special gift for you too. Della opens the gift quickly, and she find and she finds two exp- expensive combs for her long brown hair. Della knows the combs because she sees them every day in the store window on Fifth Street. She loves them, but now she has no hair for them. Jim, they are beautiful, and in six months, I can put them in my hair," says Della. But wait! I have a gift for you. Jim opens his gift slowly, and he looks at the at it. Jim, do you like it? I looked in every store. Give me your watch. Let me put it on your watch," says Stella. But. Jim doesn't give Della his watch. 
He sits down and smiles. Della, let's put our gift away for a year. He says, "I don't have my watch. I went to that store near my office. They buy watches there. You can see my watch in their window now, and you have the combs. What do we have here? The story of two people. They don't have a lot of money." But they have a lot of love, and now they are going to have a happy Christmas, because they understand about special gifts. The story two, the art game. Zef, my friend, Andy Tucker says one day. We aren't making any money. Let's try a new game. Well, Andy, Jeff says, tell me your plan. But remember this: I don't want to take money from people. We aren't going to take money from them. They are going to buy things from us. Andy says. But that's our old game. What's new? Zef asks. We are playing a child games here. People buy our things for one dollar. Let's move to Pete Bush. Pete Bush. Pete Buff. We can find some millionaire. And make a lot of money, Andy says. Why don't you want to go to Pittsburgh's? Zef asked. The millionaires in Pittsburgh worked for their money. It's new to them. Now they want to buy beautiful, expensive things. Andy say. But what are they going to buy? From us, Zef asks. Wait and see, Andy says. After three days in the bar and restaurants, a pit buff, Zef and Andy meet at their hotel on first day evening. Let's have a drink, Zef. Andy says. I know a pit buff millionaire. Where did you meet him? Zef asks. At a little coffee bar on Twelfth Street. People, millionaires, don't like expensive restaurants and bars. We talked, and he liked me. His name is a Scooter. I went to his house too. He has a twelve million dollar in the bank, but he's new millionaire. Now he wants to know about good books and theater and beautiful art. He wants to be gentleman. Andy says, "How is he going to do that?" Zeb asks. He has a teachers, and he buys expensive books and pictures. Andy says, "Okay, but what is he going to buy from us?" Zef asks. He has a lot of pictures in his house. He has a famous little girl horse, too. It's from Egypt, and it's very old. I act. Him about it, he said. There are two of these gold horses. I want the other horse, but I can't find it. 
we don't know about art. Where can we find a gold horse for Scooter? Zeb asks. Wait and see, my friend. Andy says. On Friday, Andy comes back to the hotel in the the afternoon. He has a bag with his hand. Look, Zeb. I was a little store near here. Look at this, Andy says. He opens the bag. Andy Zeb says, "Is this a gold horse from Egypt? Is it? It was under some old things in the back of the store." I said to the old man. Can I have that horse for two dollar? He said, "That's beautiful little thing. Give me fifty five dollar, and it's yours." What did you give him? Zeb asked. He was happy with twenty five, and Scooter is going to be very happy. He's going to buy my little or horse from you. Why from me? Zeb asks. You are going to call him. You are a famous art teacher. You want to buy his heart. Andy say. After Zeb telephone call, Mister Scooter arrives at the hotel. He wants to see the art teacher's gold horse. It's beautiful. Mister Scooter says, "Is the other horse from Egypt?" Yes, yes, I know about your horse. Now I want to buy it, and I want to put the two horses in a special place at my art school. I can give you two thousand dollar for the your horse. The art teacher says, "Never, you can't buy my horse. I'm going to buy yours. Here's two thousand five hundred dollar." Mister Scooter says, "Okay, with two thousand five hundred, I can buy two or three pictures for my school." The art teacher says. Now I'm going to have a two horse in my bedroom," Mister Scooter says. Zeb runs to Andy's room. Andy is looking at his watch. "Did Scooter buy the horse?" he asks. "Yes, he loved it. The money is in my bag," Zeb says. "Good, good. Let's go." There's a train to Cincinnati at ten forty-five. Andy says, "Why? Let's stay pit buff for the for the weekend." Mister Scooter is happy, and we were happy. We had the two horses, and we have a. Two thousand five hundred dollar, no problem. Zeb says, "You are right and wrong. We have a two thousand and five hundred dollar, but Scooter has only one horse." Andy says, "Andy, did you take that horse from his house?" Zeb asks. "Yes. It wasn't difficult." Andy says. But why did you tell me that story about the old man and the story near here? Zeb asks. Oh, because you never want to take money from people. Mr. Scooter have a horse for his money, and he says, "But Zeb, stop! No question. Let's go. The train is waiting." Andy says. Okay, the next story.
The Troubadour. Sam Glaway is a, the Troubadour. He moves across Texas and Oklahoma. He goes from place to place and plays music. He tells stories too, and he talks to people about their good days and their bad days, the ranchers and their families. Like listening to him, and say Sam gets a bed and food and drink for his work. On this hot summer day, we are at the Meridew Ranch in Texas. The Meridews are good people, and their ranch is big. There are always a lot of people in the house, and there is a lot of noise. After six weeks with the medidu, Sam is putting his things on his horse, and moving to a new place. He wants go to. He wants to go to ranch. With strong coffee, good food, and some quiet people. That afternoon, Sam arrives at Old Man Ellison's sheep ranch. Mister Ellison and his men are very happy with this new store visitor. The men sit at the big table in the evening. They eat and drink well. Then they listen to Sam's stories and his music. Mister Ellison always wants to hear Sam's story about an old boat, and Sam tells it every evening. Mister Ellison is a good rancher, but he is getting old. Now he has a has a problems with his sheep and with the bank. He doesn't always have money for a lot of food and drink. He can't buy things for his house and his ranch. Every day he thinks about his problems. What am I going to do? The old man thinks, but at night, he listens to Sam Galloway's music and stories, and he smiles. He thinks tomorrow is going to be okay, but it isn't okay. In the even in the morning, Mister Ellison gets odd. His horse and goes to the fields. He wants to look he at his sheep on the road. He meets a tall young man on a horse. Good morning, Mister Ellison says. Good morning, the young man says. Are you Peter Ellison? Yes, I am. Mister Ellison says, "What can I do for you?" My name is James King, but people usually call me King James. These are my fears. I don't want your sheep here. Move them, or they are going to be dead sheep. But Mister King, I don't have a. Mm, Mister Ellison starts to say, "You have one week, Mister Ellison. Seven days. Goodbye." James King says. Mister Ellison arrives home in the early evening. He is quiet 
and his eyes are unhappy. After a little food, he says, with some galloway, at the table, "Sam, play some music, please." Okay, Mister Ellison. But why are you unhappy this evening? Problems, Sam asks. A troubadour knows about Rancher's problem. Yes, a very big problem. His name is James King. Oh, James King. I know about him. People talk about him on every ranch in Texas. He has a lot of animals, and he has money in every bank in the country. He's a difficult man. Don't go near him, Sam says. That's、uh, the problem, Mister Ellison says. My sheep are in James King's fields, and he doesn't want them there. I don't have any good fields for sheep, but that's not your problem. Please play some music for me. Sam plays his music, but he watches the old man. The old man, King James, is going to be big problem for old Mister Ellison. In the morning, Mister Ellison goes to the store and go to the bank. He is looking for an answer. To his problems, he talks to some ranchers, but he can't find an answer. In the afternoon, Mister Ellison is looking at his sheep. Suddenly, King James comes across the field to him. Good afternoon, Mister Ellison. The young man says. I want to talk to you. It's important. I'm sorry, Mister King. I don't have a place for my sheep. I'm looking for a new field for them, Mister Ellison says. I don't want to talk about the sheep. I have some questions for you. First, are you from Jackson, Mississippi? Yes, I lived there for twenty-one years. Mister Ellison answers. Do you know the Reeves family in Jackson? Mister King asks. Yes, I do. Miss Caroline Reeves was my only sister. Mister Ellison, please listen to my story. I can remember an important day in nineteen. And two, it's a cold、uh, winter day, and I'm only fifteen years old. I arrive in Jackson, with no family, no food, no money. Miss Caroline Reeves sees me on the street, and takes me to her house. She gives me food and heavy coat, and good. Shoes. Then she finds a job for me at the Jackson Hotel, and every Sunday for five years, I go to her house. She is my friend and my family. In nineteen nineteen and seven, I have some money in the bank. I talked to me. Reeves about my plans. She listens and she gives me some money and a gold watch. I say goodbye and then I go to Texas. I buy my first field and four sheep. Today I have a lot of fields and a lot of sheep because Mick 
Karen Lin's reviews was a good to me one day in nineteen and two. I want to be good to you too. I have a lot of fears. Your sheep can't stay here, and do you have any problems with money? King James asks. The old man tells the young man about his problems with the bank and with the ranch. You aren't going to have any problems after today. I'm going to put two thousand dollar in the bank for you tomorrow morning. I'm going to talk to Mister Books at the store. Buy the things for your house and your ranch. I'm going to give Mister Books the money for them. You are. Miss Caroline Reeves' brother, that's very special to me," King James says. Mister Ellison go back, goes back to his ranch with a smile on his face. He wants to hear some music, but Sam Galloway isn't in the house. In the evening, evening, Mister Ellison is drinking coffee at the table. The door opens, and Sam walks in. "Hello, Sam," Mister Ellison says. "You are very late. Did you go to Frio for the day? Play some music for me, please. I am happy, man." And tomorrow is going to be a new day, but Sam doesn't play any music that night. He sits at the table and looks at Mister Ellison. I went to Frio, and I looked for King James. I had your big knife in my coat. He was in the hotel behind the theater. His hand moved. To his knife, but I was quick. You aren't going to have any problems with him tomorrow. He's dead. J. Sam says, Mister Ellison is quiet. Then he looks at Sam and say, "Can you play some music now? I can't understand." Things this evening, maybe tomorrow. The next story, money talks. Number twenty-four Park Street is a big, expensive house. Old Mister Attorney Rob Wall lives there. He worked for many years, and now he has a lot of money. He's old, and he doesn't work. A man drives his car for him. A woman makes his food. A boy brings the newspaper to him. Mister Rockwell sits in his big chair and smiles. He is a happy man. Mister Rockwell calls his son. Richard, come here. I want to talk to you. Mister Rockwell's son comes in and sits down. He is a quiet young man of twenty-one. Yes, father. Richard, the men on this street are gentlemen. They come from good families and have a lot of money. They we wasn't we aren't famous old family, but we have a lot of money. My money makes you a gentleman. Two, money can open a lot of doors for you, Mister Rockwell says with a smile. 
It can open some doors, Father, but not every door. Richard says, "My son, don't say that. We have no problems. Ask people on the street. Ask for your friends. What door doesn't open with money?" Mister Rockwell asks. Money can can't buy a place at the table on the right people. Richard says, "A young, man, you are wrong, young man." Father says, and he looks into his son's eyes. Son, the families of these men didn't always have a lot of money. They know about work. You make a lot of money with a lot of work. Richard is quiet. Son, what's the problem? Are you sick? What's wrong? You can talk to me, Mister Rockwell says. Father, I'm not sick. I'm have a good home, an interesting job. And a smart old father, but what's her name? Mister Rockwell asks. Oh, father, she's beautiful and very special. Her name is Ellen Landry. She's only woman for me. Richard says. Talk to her, dance with her, walk in the rain with her. She's going to love you too. His father says, "You are a good young man. You are special too, but she's always with people." Richard says, "I never have any time with her. She never has time for me." Richard, take some money, and you can buy some time with her. Talk to her about your love. The old man says, "I can't." Richard says, "She's going to Europe by boat tomorrow morning. She's going to stay there for two years. This evening, I'm going to take her to the theater, but it is very short drive. I'm not going to have much time for her, with her." And you can't buy her time, okay, Richard? Now I understand. Your love for her is very strong, but she doesn't know about it. What's your problem, Mister Rockwell says? She can't know because there isn't time. Richard says he's very unhappy. Your money can't talk to her. At eight o'clock in the evening, Richard goes to the beautiful young woman's house. Good evening, Richard. Miss Lantry says, "Mother and father are visiting for us at the theater. I don't want to be late." Two wall acts. Theater, please, Richard. Richard. Says to the driver, but at Thirty Fourth Street, the car stops. What's wrong? Richard asks. I'm sorry, Mister Rockwell. The driver says, there are cars to the left, to the right, and behind us. We can't move. Every car in New York is sitting here. Oh, Richard, are you going to be late? Miss Lantry asks. I'm very sorry, Ellen. No theater for us this evening. Richard says. That's okay. I don't like theater very much. I'm very happy in the car with you, Miss Lantry. Says, are you? Richard asks with a smile. Later, the same evening, Richard 
walks into his father's office. The old man is reading his newspaper. Father, Richard says, Miss Laundrie and I are in love. Very good, Richard. I'm happy for you, his father says. We are. We talked and talked. She loves me. You see, money can't buy love, Richard says. Then she happy young man goes to bed. But let's finish his story. At seven o'clock in the morning, Mister Kelly comes to the door, and Mister Rockwell's house. Good evening, Mister Kelly. Mister Rockwell say you did a good job yesterday evening. Here's your five thousand dollar. It was difficult, Mister Rockwell. The drivers of the car want the ten dollar, and the policeman wanted fifty dollar. But cars stopped stopped for us on every street. Did it all go well? Mister Kelly asks. Well, yes, it was beautiful. Let drink to love. And to money. <laughs> okay. Shh. The next story, Shopi, Winter's home. Shopi lives on the street of New York. He likes the sun and the trees. He doesn't like buildings, or house, or jobs. For nine months of the year, Shopee is happy man. Then the first week of December comes. At night, Shopee puts on his old coat and hat, and he puts their newspapers under him. But he's a、uh, he's cold and he can't sleep. He gets up and he walks up. And down the street, he can't live on the streets all winter. But Shopi has a plan. He has the same plan every December. He's going to do a bad thing. Not a very bad thing. But a policeman is going to put him in jail for three months for this thing. Then Shopi is going to have a food and a bed for a bed for the winter. In March, he is going to finish his time in jail. He is going to be. On the streets are of New York again, for nine beautiful months. Shopi thinks about his plan. He is going to visit a very smart restaurant. First, he is going to eat some expensive food, and then he is going to sit in the bar with the, an expensive. Drink, after his food and drink, Shopi is going to say, "I'm sorry, but I don't have any money." Then the men at the restaurant are going to make a telephone call. A policeman is going to come and put Shopi in jail for three months. No cold streets for the winter. Shopi smiles and walks into Shabon's restaurant, but the man at the door looks at Shopi old shoes and says, "You can't come in here. The people in here have money. They have good coats and shoes. Go home. You can't eat here." Shopi sits down and thinks about his plan again. 
This time he walks down Sixth Street, and finds an expensive store, with a big window. He hits the window with a heavy bottle. Many people and one policeman hear the noise and run to the store. Shopee stands near the window and smiles. Who did this? Policeman asks. Where's the man? Maybe I'm that man, Shopee says with a friendly smile. You aren't the man. Look, down there, a man is running away. The policeman says, "He runs after the man." No jail for Shopee this afternoon. That evening, Shopee walks to a street with many theaters. He sees a lot of beautiful men and women in. Expensive coats and dresses. They are talking and smiling. They are going to have a good time in the theaters and restaurants. Near one theater, Shopee sees a tall policeman too. Suddenly, Shopee runs into in front of the people and start to dance. Then he makes a lot of noise. He is very friendly. He talks to the important people. Hello, how are you, my friends? What are you going to see this evening? Can I come to the theater with you? The policeman sees Shopee. He looks at him and says. To the people, he's a student from the theater school. They always make a lot of noise, but they aren't a problem. It's game for them. Shopee is angry and very unhappy. How can he get into the jail for the winter? He walks down the street and sees a man. In a big office, the man's pen is on the table near the window. Shopee puts his hand in the window and takes the pen. He walks slow down the street. The man runs into the street and says, "Stop! You have my pen. Your pen." Shopee asks. Then call a policeman, but the man from the office doesn't call a policeman. He has problems with the police too. He doesn't want to talk to a policeman. Maybe it's your pen. The policeman, the man says to Shopee, "Goodbye." Shopee is going to sleep on the street again today. He sits down and makes a new plan. Maybe he can get a job. Maybe he can have some money, and an apartment, and good shoes, and a lot of food. Maybe he is too old for the street. Tomorrow, he is going to find a job. This winter, he isn't going to be cold, and he isn't going to be in jail. He is going to be an important man. He's happy with his new plan. Then Shopee hears a person near him. Excuse me, a policeman says. What are you doing here? What's your problem? No problem, my good man. Shopee says. What's your address? What? Ah,、uh, where do you work? The policeman asks. No address, no job, but I'm going to look for a job tomorrow. Shopee says, "No address. Come with me. Three months in jail for you." Policeman says. Okay, that's it.